Indigenous people uh, d depend directly of, from biodiversity for their livelihoods, for health, for food, and also for uh, cultural well-being. They also live um, in areas of high biodiversity and their culture has strong conservation ethics and they have a lot of traditional knowledge about sustainable use and conservation of biodiversity. In many cases, they don't have legally secure rights to their land, so they're facing displacement um, and loss of land from um, either big development projects like dams and mining and uh, agriculture, uh, but also in some cases from co strict conservation of protected areas. Another problem they're facing is also a loss of their cultural values and cultural identity because in many cases traditional knowledge isn't taught in schools and um, agricultural research programs and agricultural development focus very much on promoting modern agriculture and markets are promoting um, you know, modernisation of indigenous cultures. There's the Convention on Biodiversity and also the Nagoya Protocol which um, requires uh, benefit sharing from the use of traditional knowledge of indigenous peoples and local communities. There's also the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples which is very important because it recognises their rights to land and natural resources and genetic resources. In order to promote synergies between indigenous peoples and biodiversity, I think the first thing you need to do is uh, have legal recognition of the, their rights to their land. Uh, secondly, a very important thing is to give um, and to strengthen indigenous peoples' leadership over the management of biodiversity, because traditional knowledge has an important role to play in conservation as well, um, because it, it um, understands the linkages that uh, between at the macro level between socio-ecological systems much better or as well as uh, western science does <laughs> <laughs>